Well, hello, YouTubers. I'm John Can. Today I'm going to show you something really cool. I'm going to teach you how to take a nap. Just kidding. We're not going to take a nap. I'm out here at the lake, my son, catching fish, having a good time, relaxing a bit. So we don't really have time for a nap. And we speak about time a lot. Most of us spend the majority of our lives trading our time for money. It's kind of a lame thing, you know, the way that works out, but it is what it is. I think that a lot of us would like to be able to go back in time, change time, or even be in two places at once probably isn't a good idea but we can always keep track of time so let's build something that does that we can build a clock you are not helpful we're gonna start this project off by cutting the body of the clock off of a tree trunk using a chainsaw as always when you're using power tools make sure you're wearing the proper protective equipment gloves earplugs eye protection you know that stuff the slab of wood that I'm cutting is about three inches thick. You want to make sure that you cut something pretty heavy, that way you can work with it. You know, you're going to take it in and uh, trim it down quite a bit to make it smooth. So cut a little thicker than you want. Now that we've got our slab in the shop, we need to smooth it out. I want up building a jig that I could run my router across to take the excess material off and make the slab of wood flat. You're going to build your jig to where it slides back and forth over the wood slab. That way you can move it as you take material off of your slab of wood. It didn't take very long to build this jig, and you'll see that I put a couple of screws on the bottom of it. That way I could adjust the height of it by taking the screws in and out as was necessary. Now that you got your jig set up, you're ready to start using the router to take the excess material off of your slab of wood. The piece of wood that I'm using is pretty brittle, so I went pretty slow and only took off about a quarter of an inch uh, with each pass of the router. That way I didn't wind up with any cracks or chips coming out of the wood. Okay, so I've got both sides of the slab of wood trimmed down to where they're flat. Now it's time to drill a hole in the clock, and this is where you're going to put the clock movement. You want to drill this hole in a size that it's just big enough for the clock movement shaft to fit in it snugly. Uh, you don't want there to be too much play in it. It makes it hard to set it up when you get the clock finished. Now you're going to set the movement into its location in the wood slab and trace around it. This is going to give you a pattern so you can cut a hole in the slab using your router. That way the clock movement can sit inside the slab and doesn't stick out. You want to cut the pocket in the slab just deep enough to where you can set the movement in place and the shaft pokes out just far enough to be able to put the washer and the nut on there that secure it to the slab. Kinda like this. You can see by looking at the slab of wood that I cut um, that there are a lot of cracks in it. These older logs are going to be pretty brittle so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build a set of spars and then we're going to use the router to cut channels in the slab and use wood glue to set these spars into the slab to make it a little stronger. The slab is from a mulberry tree that uh, came out of my yard and for the spars I'm using oak. Now that I've got the spars cut I'm going to lay them out on the slab where I want them and just trace around them that way I know where to uh, cut the channels with the router. You definitely need to take your time when you're cutting these channels. You want to make sure that the spars will fit in them snugly and that they will sit down inside the channels just far enough to where the slab is slightly taller than the spars. Now that your channels are cut out, you're ready to pour some wood glue into the channels. Uh, it's one of those kinds of situations where a little bit more glue than is necessary is better. Okay, we're going to tap the spars down in there so they sit nice and snug into our wood slab. And this is going to need to sit for at least a few hours, if not overnight. So at this point, you're going to walk away for a while. Okay, our glue is dried and now we're ready to start sanding the slab. The router did a pretty good job of making the slab flat, but it left it pretty rough. You don't really need to sand the back of the slab much, you're just looking to knock the rough stuff off of it. I just used an 80 grit sandpaper on the back of this thing, it seemed to be sufficient. 
Uh, I did not sand around the circumference of the slab at all. Now the face of the clock is a completely different story. You're going to wind up sanding this thing quite a bit. What you're looking to do is get it smooth enough that you can see the gro growth rings in the wood very easily. I started off with the 80 grit sandpaper, worked my way to uh, about a 500 in the end. It took quite a while, uh, but the results were worth it. If you have a project where you're going to be doing a lot of sanding, please make sure that you wear a respirator. The sawdust is not healthy. Now that we've got the sanding complete, we're ready to start working on sealing the wood. Uh, I used shop air to blow this thing off. You want to clean it off pretty well, get all the sawdust out of the cracks and whatnot. You don't want any of that stuff floating around in your clear coat. So you're probably looking at this going, why are you screwing wood screws into your wooden bench, John Can? Uh, the gist of it is, is I didn't want the wooden slab to sit directly on the bench after I painted it with the clear coat. And this way the slab would be able to sit up in the air while it dried. I'm using a clear acrylic to seal the slab of wood. Uh, I started off on the back, it took a couple of coats. The wood is pretty dry and it soaked the acrylic up pretty well. Whatever you're using to seal it, you want to make sure you get it into all of the little cracks and uh, crevices on your piece of wood. That way you don't have to worry about any bugs getting into it or the stuff just rotting while it's hanging on the wall. Alright, we're done with the back and the sides of our slab. Now it's time to move on to the clock face. Uh, we sanded this pretty smooth and we want to make sure that we get a smooth finish on it when we put the acrylic on it. So be careful uh, when you're painting it to make sure that you get a nice even set of coats on there. Now that that's painted, it's time to walk away for a couple hours and let it dry. We got a nice smooth finish on the face of our clock, now it's time to install the clock movement. I went ahead and laid down a piece of fabric on the bench, that way the slab for the clock wouldn't be just sitting on my dirty bench and getting marred up and scratched. For this clock I'm just using a basic movement and a simple set of hands. Installing the movement is pretty simple. Put the movement into the pocket you cut out with the router, put the flat washer on there, and then screw the retaining net onto the movement. How your hands will be installed will vary depending on what kind you buy. Uh, this set just basically pushed onto the movement. Very simple to install. Now that we have the hands installed on the clock, we're able to run all of the hands around until they point to 12. This is where we're going to start installing our numbers. Of course, just putting basic numbers on the face of this clock would be too simple. So I went ahead and built 12 uh, different arrowheads to put on the face of this clock instead of numbers. If you're interested in learning about flint napping and how to make tools to do flint napping, uh, please check out my last video. I will put a link to it in this video's description. And of course you can use whatever you'd like for your numbers on your clock. Uh, coins, buttons, anything like that would work. To secure your numbers to the face of your clock, you want to use something that's going to be pretty stout. I went up using a clear epoxy. Getting the first number set is pretty simple. You've got your hands lined up and you're basically just going to set the number where it looks good. Uh, from there you're going to wind up moving the hands of the clock to where your hour hand is pointing at the next location. This will mean that your minute hand is pointing up at 12 o'clock. So you're going to have to use a ruler or something to measure the distance that your numbers are set out from the center of the clock. And you're basically just going to carry on in this fashion until you've got all your numbers or arrowheads or whatever it is glued onto the face of the clock. You know that it's worth noting that uh, you want to mix your epoxy in small batches. It takes a few minutes to get each of these numbers set up um, and the epoxy will have a tendency to harden uh, by the time you get two or three of them done. We've got all the numbers epoxied onto the face of the clock. It's a good idea to walk away for a while and let the epoxy harden. Our epoxy is hardened. Now we need to attach this picture frame hanger to the back of the clock. You'll need to figure out where to mount this on your clock so the clock will balance. Mark it with a sharpie, and then drill a couple of pilot holes for the screws that you're going to use to attach the hanger to the clock. And again, this is the kind of thing where you want the screws to be just a little longer than you think is necessary. At this point, we've got our clock built. All we have left to do is put a battery in the movement, and it's finished. Ta-da! Now you'll never have a reason to be late for anything ever again. These videos take quite a bit of time to produce. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. The more people watch them, the more cool things I'll be able to build. Thank you for spending some of your time watching this video. I'm John Can, and remember, if I can build it, so can you.